right, guys, we are going to do a video here and we are going to change the strings on the guitar. So first and foremost, uh, a couple things we're going to need. We are going to need, I remind you guys, it's a one man show here. So, okay, we're just sitting by the river. We're just going to change some strings on the guitar. So first and foremost, we need to use a pack of guitar strings. I am using uh, the Dario Phosphor Bronze Acoustic Light Guitar light guitar strings. Now, I am not sponsored by Diderio, so I get nothing for this. This is, I'm not promoting, it's just a brand that's good, that I like, and uh, this is not a paid promotion. So we want to get, uh, these are light gauge. Now, the heavier the gauge string you use, the better the tone you're gonna get, but on the acoustic you're gonna find these are pretty thick, so if you go to a higher up gauge, it's going to be even harder on the fingers, but it's interesting on the acoustic. If you go to a lighter gauge, you really notice they don't sound good. So sometimes people that have problems with their fingers hurting, they can go to like really light strings that are really thin and flimsy, but the tone isn't very good. So for me, I really enjoy the acoustic light gauge. When to know to change your strings? Well, you're going to start knowing. If you get a brand new guitar, like this one was, they come with factory strings. They're not top of the line strings. They're okay at best but the tone will just start to deaden, die. It just won't sound as good, as bright, as lively. Um, but again, this is something your ear's gonna develop as you keep learning on the guitar. So we wanna have a set of strings. So peg winders, of course, is gonna help speed up the process of changing the strings. A set of small wire cutters. I have an extra set of pliers, just in case. And also, we are gonna have some Q-tips. And we are going to have a bag for the garbage and the old strings. You want to be careful with the old strings and the old fragments of strings because uh, if they get on the floor, they can go on your foot, go through your hand. Lots of weird stuff has happened. I am using uh, just a really basic profile chromatic guitar clip-on tuner. Okay, so if you have a tuner, guys, you're going to want to use a chromatic tuner. And you are also going to, because if it's chromatic, it can pick up if your string's really out of tune, it's going to pick up whatever note range you're in. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I would really encourage you to do our theory, absolute beginner theory lesson one video, and then come back. We are going to get into some videos really specific about tuning, but not this video. So the first thing we're going to do here is we are going to detune all the strings. Tune all of them. Okay, make sure they're nice and loose. Changing the guitar strings is an actual art form. So it does take a bit of practice and time. Mind you, I'm, as I'm doing this, I'm minding like several cameras. <laughs> so this is gonna be a challenge for me. Okay, like anything, it takes practice. Okay, so now we've loosened the strings. And this is where things get really interesting, okay? So I'm going to, I'm gonna cut the strings, All right? So I'm gonna cut the strings. Make sure these don't pop out and blind you. So I still have some tension here on my high E string, so we don't want them to have much tension when we're gonna cut them because we don't want it to spring off and poke out your eye or I put a severe damper on your day. Okay? So now as we do that, now we have on the end of the tuning peg. Sorry, on the end of the peg winder, we have a little notch. You can fit under the peg, pop the peg out, just like that. Okay, there we go. Then I just pull the strings out. 
like that. I wrap them up. And then I put them in the garbage bag. Now we're going to take off these ends here. I'm going to use my regular pliers for that. Okay. These can go through the ends of your fingers, or your fingertips, so that does happen. If you're a guitar player, get used to it because it will happen from time to time. So I like to have these nice and wound up because if they fall on the floor, I like to bend the ends a little bit. So if someone steps on it, it's less likely to go through their foot. Unless it's someone I don't like, but I don't like to live with people I don't like. I've done that before. <laughs> it ain't fun. So, put these in the garbage. Did you ever notice, I don't know what it is, but with age, especially in my mid-40s, I used to have the most amazing eyesight. And then my mid-40s, my eyesight just really started to go. So when I read or have to do, see small things. So, with my eyes, when I have to see small things or do small tasks or read small sometimes even looking at my phone now i need i need uh, glasses well, that ain't fun but hey time marches on as they say right there we go gotcha okay so again this one here you can see i'm uh going to bend the string in a little bit to make it that much harder for someone. So this doesn't go through the bag and it doesn't go into somebody's feet. Okay, and let's see here, we gotta find the ending of this one. Good God, any, oh, got it, gotcha. Okay, now, next up. While I have the strings off, we are going to take our Q-tip, okay? Now on the Q-tip, we are going to, not too hard, but just firmly press against the frets. Now this is a new guitar, it's not gonna to be too bad. But if you have a guitar that you're gonna be playing for a while, uh, you're gonna notice build up, and it can get kind of gross on your strings. This, so far, is not too bad. But again, it's a new guitar, right? Hardly been played. And sometimes, though, the stuff that can come off the frets is pretty disgusting. Okay. So, guys, for beginners, again, why I started this channel, as I said, it, this isn't just a beginner's channel, but I want to spend some time to help beginners because, as, as I've said a million times, it just seems so confusing out there, and it doesn't need to be. Uh, You'll have to know how to tune to put strings on, and if you do not know the chromatic scale, it can get a little bit tricky. So again, I recommend theory lesson one. So here, we got a bit of some stuff on here. Let's see if we can get to focus in here on the, see that? Okay, but this is nothing. Some guitars, boy, when I clean those frets, especially, if I, especially when I was gigging, I'm under the hot lights and Oh man, it would be really disgusting. So it's good to run gently run a Q-tip along the fret, get off some of that grime. Sometimes I'll take it here on the bridge, get out some of that dirt, and give the guitar a bit of love. So next thing is I'm gonna open up my pack of strings, and the ball endings are usually color-coded, at least they are with the Dario. So it's kind of easy to follow, and it is here. We have a little guide on it too. So what we want here, we're gonna put our low E string on first, and it is bronze. It has a bronze ball bearing on it. Okay. So again, when you take these packages out, sorry, when you take these strings out of the packages, you wanna be very careful. One time I did this with the tightly went up, it went up and it cut, it uncoiled and it, with a lot of force and it cut, really put a good cut into my uh, cheek. Now it didn't bother me any, but it, it was surprising. <laughs> So you wanna be careful with that. So now let's uh, let's talk here about getting the string in. So we have our peg. Okay, we'll go to our little close-up shot here, okay? So we have our peg. Okay, so what we want, we have this little indentation. So we want the ball to be down at the bottom of that and caught really nicely in the indentation. 
and holding the string in place, okay? So we're gonna go ahead, put that in, put that down. I'm gonna pull, I can feel the ball go into place. It's a little bit of a feel thing. Feel with balls. Get your mind out of the gutter. Okay, so now we're gonna go back here. Okay, so let's just show you, I got the vlogging camera out today. So I'm gonna align the hole so it is lined up with the nut and I can line it up with the strings as I wind it. Nice two, maybe three wounds around. It can always be a little tricky, but when you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple actually. Uh, we don't want to have like tons of wounds because that can affect your tuning or the string staying in tune. So we don't want tons of winds there, sorry, so to speak. Excuse my poor English. So I'm going to put this in. I am not going to really tune this right up the tune yet, okay? I've got the peg wonder, okay? So I have some excess here. I'm going to estimate this is going to be about two or three winds. And when it crosses over, we want it to cross over the top. One wind, we're going to come up to about two. Okay, there's tension on the neck when we put it, the strings in tune, so I got a bit of tension there. And now we're gonna to go to our next one. So our next one for our A string is red, okay? So again, if we go back here. I am going to have the peg. I have the indentation here. I'm gonna make sure that the ball gets into the indentation and it's locked underneath, okay? Again, that takes a bit of feel with your balls. Get your mind out of the gutter. There we go. Pulled up while I pushed the peg down. I can feel it lock into place. And now I'm gonna come back here. And we are going to do, I've got the hole lined up, okay? because you need the hole lined up so you know where to put it in the hole. And I'm gonna estimate about this length so we get about two winds. Okay, I was a little short last time so I'm going to, I want my two nice winds around. So let's try right there, okay? I'm gonna push this down while I'm winding. Make sure that line goes over the top. Okay, you can actually get like screwdriver machines now that have the peg thing, so it goes bloop, 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 even quicker, but we're not gonna quite do that, okay? Okay, we have some tension there. I haven't brought it up to complete tension. So now we're gonna go back to the black. You'll know just looking at the strings, you can tell the difference in the uh, thickness, the gauge of them. Be careful when you unwind them. So now we're going to go to the black, which is the D string. Okay, so here we go back here. Got our peg. Okay. Peg right there, we're gonna make sure that the ball locks in the indentation, so I'm gonna put the ball end in first. Peg down, pull up, locks. And we go back here. All right, I'm gonna talk like Bob Ross, is that okay? Okay, now, line up the hole. You're gonna put it in the hole. There we are, just right. Okay, we're gonna go for a couple of winds here, okay? And we don't want too many winds because then it can affect the tuning. Oh, that might be too much, let's see. We got one wind, we're going for two. Actually, this is gonna come up just nice. Oh, the, the wind just came into place very nicely. Now, got some tension there. Now we're gonna carry on. We're gonna to go to the next one. So we want the G string, which is green. See that? See, focus on the green. 
you focus on it? Come on, expensive camera. That's one thing about YouTube, guys, is it is <laughs> it is an endeavor. It's a lot of work. Uh, for, you don't get much in return. I never wanted to be one of these channels where I'm like, hey, can you subscribe? Subscribe, guys. Hey, you know, that just irritates me when people do that. So I try not to do that to people. But it is nice when you see your subscriber count go up. Okay. So there we go again, right here. Okay, we've got the G-string in now. Now we are winding the opposite way, because now the tuning pegs, the G, B, and I, E string, they are on the other side of the headstock. So for those of you that don't know this, this on the guitar, this part is called the headstock. Okay, not woodstock. That's where people, you know, did a lot of drugs and slid around in mud and bathed naked in rivers and stuff. You know that weird movie? I'm uh, just kidding. There's a lot of good music at Woodstock. It was just a different time. So we are going to make sure that we're always turning the peg winder in the same direction. Now it's going to seem like the opposite because we are on the other side of the headstock. Okay. So let's do this. Let's see if we can get a couple of winds here. Looks good. Looks like we're going to come into a couple of winds around. Okay. There we go. Let's carry on, shall we? Now these ones you gotta be really careful with, the smaller gauge ones. So we want G, sorry, we want B and high E. And you gotta be careful because man, sometimes when these spring out, when they uncoil, they attack you like a snake. So, there we go. There we go. So now the next gauge we want for our B string, it is purple. So the Dario, let's do it up. The Dario makes it nice and easy with the color coding of the ball bearings. So now we're going to go back here. Come over here, little vlogging camera. And we are going to put this in tune here. Put this in tune. Hmm. So, got the indentation here. And we are going to use the ball bearing down. I'm trying to get, we'll get to, oh, there we go. Oh, that was nice. I feel it go into place. So we're going to carry on. We have the B string. We're going to loop it through here. Okay. Again, we're just going to leave it so it has just enough. I don't know, maybe about six inches through the hole. We're going to try and get two or three turns. We don't want to have too many turns. We don't want anything that can affect our, our tuning. So we're going to tighten, we're always tighten in the same direction. Okay, we're going to make sure the first, the string goes over the top the first time. So the pegs, to know that you have the pegs really tight, you uh, will know because if you don't, if the ball hasn't slipped into place properly, the peg will ping right off when you're tuning up the guitar. So I think we have it pretty good here, but we'll check once we're good with the final tune. Now. Okay, so we have a few turns there. We probably could have passed a little bit more through. Maybe seven inches next time. Now. Last one. We have our high E string. Look at that, see? Can I focus in on it? Anyway, it is a silver bearing. Silver bearing here, so we're gonna put it in. Oh, I think it went into place there quite nicely. And we're going to go back here. For you guys, again, I am one cameraman. So, I'm going to put a little bit more through than I did on the B string. A little bit two or three nice even wraparounds here. There we go. So, we're going to go like that. Now, you might notice sometimes a lot of people don't cut the ends of their strings. I always found, found that to be a very serious eye hazard. 
I don't get why people used to do that or why people do that. I always like to keep my strings nice and trim, but I don't trim the excess string until after the guitar is tuned up. Okay, in case something happens, one time I did that and the peg popped out and I had to try and redo it and the string was toast because I cut it too soon. So I like to wait until everything is set and in tune nicely. Now, I'm gonna have the tuner here so you can focus in on that. Strings are on, we've got some tension happening. Now we are going to start tuning this guitar up. Coming into some tension here. Okay. Now bring the other strings up equally. Oh, you feel that? Adjust it. You hear that little weird sound? The ball is adjusting into the indentation. I'm trying to get stuck in the groove, so to speak. If you do it wrong, you'll know. The peg's gonna go pop, like an Atlas rocket back in the Apollo program. So we're tightening it up. Remember, there's tension across the neck, right? So I don't like getting one string just all the way in tune. Maybe some people do that. I don't like doing that. I like to kind of bring them up evenly. Maybe we'll get a peg to pop here. First time on YouTube ever. No, I doubt it. YouTube's quite a slog, guys. Okay, so now, if you understand what the chromatic scale, we're going to get this tuned up to E. It's in tune. Okay, now it's going to go out of tune as I tune up the other strings, of course, because the tension is changing over the guitar neck. A string is now in tune. It's going to go out of tune as well. Okay, now talking about stretching strings, there's different schools of thought with that. Some people like to grab the string, pull up and ping them. I don't do that. Some people like to grab underneath and push down their thumb and yank on the string to stretch it in. I don't like doing that. I remember uh, taking a course with a luthier, luthier meaning someone who actually was skilled in crafting and making guitars. Uh, and he said to never do that. Just let play them and let the strings stretch themselves. People might argue that, that's how I like to do it. So. Let's get the D string happening here. I hope you're all, you all are doing good on your travels on the guitar. It takes patience for the first while. It's very easy to give up, right? And that's why I wanted to do, this is why I wanted to develop my guitar channel to help people who are beginners. Because some of the channels that are, I'm not saying I'm better than anyone else, but a lot of the channels that are you know, aimed at beginners, sometimes the lessons ain't for beginners. They're, they miss a lot of steps and sequences in it. Tune this up to G. There we go. That's the one, folks. Now we're going to go on to our B and high E string. I remember trying to learn this. I was learning all this without a teacher many years ago, back in the 80s. I don't know if you guys remember that, the 80s. God, I wish I could go back in time with the knowledge and wisdom I have now. Okay, so we can hear that going out of tune, so that still hasn't locked into place yet. See that? The ball ain't in quite right. Got that live on YouTube. Maybe 
maybe we'll get one that's going to pop out at me. strings in tune. Now we're going to go to the high E string. For a lot of people when you break a string, it usually is the high E string. So it's just a little bit below E. We're going to go back and just go over the tension, get all the other strings tuned up. So yeah, this really dropped down. There we go. So I'm kind of fine tuning now. With new strings, they are going to go out of tune on you, okay, until they get broken in. Now where I am, it's starting to get cold and the heat's starting to click on. So I did a video about watching the humidity wherever you live with the guitar, storing the guitar. I'm not going to go over that again, but I would encourage you guys to watch that, okay? So we can see here now, E's in tune. A is in tune, D is in tune, G is in tune, or B, or high is in tune, okay? So, now I know it's in tune, I know the pegs are going to stick in, so now I am going to cut and trim the, the strings on the headstock here, okay? So here we go. So I hope you guys like my channel. I know there's a lot of guitar channels out there. See that? But very importantly, what, I go, what I'm going to do is I like to make a circle out of this and wrap it up this way because these are nasty when they get stuck in your foot. If you have a pet running around, you don't want it to get into a pet's foot. Okay, it's not nice for the pet. Okay, so here, got my cutters. Just get a nice little pair of cutters. Focus on that expensive camera. Can you focus on that? Anyway, sometimes it focuses, sometimes it doesn't. Normally it doesn't focus when I need it to focus. Anyway, so now I'm, I'm nicely trimming off the excess string. And you want to be careful too with that, that you don't leave any sharp um, pieces of wire that's been cut sticking out, because again, that's where you can Cut your finger open. Okay, next one. I hope you guys like my YouTube approach. As I said, I know there's a lot of other channels out there. And the thing is with these channels, once they start getting the subscribers and they start making some income and money from it, a lot of them they get producers and they get people that help with camera work and lighting and all that other stuff. And that's why when you watch their videos, they have amazing freaking production. And some, some do on your own, but uh, it is a challenge when you're one person. So anyone that helps you is always very appreciative. Appreciated. So now I'm going to trim off the last one for the excess here. Okay. You want to make sure that you're you can see well enough. One time I went to cut off the excess, but I actually cut the string too. <laughs> bada boo, bada bing. There goes the string. So. So what you're going to do is now play the you-know-what out of the guitar because you're going to have to stretch the strings. It will go out of tune. Again, some I've heard crazy theories where people like to tune the guitar higher and stretch the strings that way. I don't recommend that. I just like getting it into tune. Uh, some people snap the strings, as I said, but I don't just start playing it. It will go out of tune on you, though. So you know the E string has dropped a little bit. Right? 
So, when you're playing, that in a nutshell is a pretty thorough video on how to change the guitar strings. It's a lot to cover, it's hard to show all in one video, but hopefully that did a half decent job. So it takes practice guys, you are going to screw up, you are going to fumble up a few times when you change the guitar, but hopefully that gives you guys a good overview. So remember, practice hard, practice smart, and we'll see you soon.